People often ask me whether or not I believe in ghosts, and to be honest, I have no definite answer. I believe there's more on heaven and earth than we can explain, but perhaps our understanding is of all things ghostly are not quite yet what we would wish. Well, for tonight, I have two stories of mysterious men whose appearances cannot be fully explained. Yes, my dear friends, two more stories from Dr. Creepin's Vault, the subreddit I set up so I could read all your stories to you. Now, my dear friends, once again, I merely ask that you sit back and relax with your favorite drink and listen. I'm a night janitor for an elementary school. My work hours are from 3 p.m. to about midnight. Sometimes I stay until almost 3 a.m. when there are after school activities. I have to help set them up and then clean when they're over, leaving me to clock out at almost dawn sometimes. My designated section has 24 rooms that I clean alone. Lately, it's been getting dark rather early. When the clock strikes six, the sun begins to descend into the horizon of swaying trees and half-lit homes, eventually disappearing. Around the same time, all of the other staff members hurry out of the building, leaving me to my work. I'm going to leave the name of the school, my real name, any other's real names and the location out of this one because... I just want to keep my identity and the image of the school safe. So, for this story, I'll be Tim. Since I work nights, I always get that paranoia that I'm being watched. I always chalked it up to my mind playing tricks on me, since I'm all alone in this building for several hours at a time. But it was right after Halloween when something strange began to occur. It was that time of year when the trees lose their leaves and take on a skeletal silhouette. Ah, autumn. I started to notice that more and more of the students looked as if they were shaken up about something. Always looking at the floor when walking. Quiet. Anxious. Signifying a sort of retreat. This didn't set well with me. The students were dismissed at 3.30 so I'm present while they're still in class. Now, I'm a first-time father and cared for these children. I may be just a janitor, but I'm not some weirdo or heartless guy who just wants a paycheck. These kids were young, and they needed to feel safe. So I talked with them when I was given the chance. They called me Mr. Tim the Vacuum Man. I'm in my twenties, so I'm approachable to a younger crowd, and I felt this brought a sense of comfort to them, rather than some oh, creepy night janitor who is unwelcoming. I saw a child who was walking down the hall and was obviously frightened about something, constantly looking over his shoulder with his eyebrows raised. I asked quietly, Is something bothering you, kiddo? He let out a short yelp. Whoa, it's okay, it's just me. Is everything all right? I tried to reassure the boy. Oh, hey, Mr. Tim. Yeah, I'm okay, he said nervously. You know, if there's something bothering you, don't be afraid to tell me about it. I can probably help you. <laughs> I'm Mr. Tim, the vacuum man. He laughed and then said, Yeah, I know. Okay, well... Whenever I use the bathroom, I see this tall man smiling at me. I immediately got chills. What? Is it someone in the school? Someone you recognize? He replied. No, I can barely see him. He's all black. It's like a shadow. But I know he's there. I know it. This could have just been the child's imagination. I mean, Halloween had just passed, so maybe he was just scared from that. But all of the other students were behaving rather odd, so maybe this boy was really seeing someone, or something, stalking him in the bathroom. <sighs> that just sounds like it's your imagination, kiddo. I wouldn't worry about it. 
Maybe it's just your mind playing tricks on you since Halloween just passed. Just try to focus on your schoolwork more. Maybe it'll go away. I tried to calm him. Yeah, I'll try. He spoke softly. <laughs> All right, off you go then. But this bothered me. Was there some pervert hiding in the bathrooms here? My mind began to race. I couldn't just ignore this information. My first thought was to tell the principal. When I did, her reaction was exactly as I imagined. She called the student to her office and asked the child to explain to her what he had told me. He did, sort of frantically, and this made the principal uneasy. The next day, she hired a security guard to patrol the hallways. After about a week, the kids still remained anxious, but never spoke of this figure. No one really pried on the matter anyway. We just expected this to be some sort of scare tactic to make this person flee, if there was anyone there to begin with. It seemed like it worked. So, the security guard was dismissed, and the staff resumed their cheerful outlook on their jobs, instead of being worried about a creep that may have been lurking in the shadows ready to pounce on a helpless child. Well, I'm just glad this wasn't the case. I remember one particular shift. My calendar read that there was going to be a Cub Scouts meeting in the media center at 6.15, and basketball practice at 6.30. So that meant I would most likely be here until just before the break of dawn. At around six, I unlocked one of the front doors for the Cub Scouts counsellor and the coach of the basketball team. Moments passed and the Cub Scouts counsellor walked through the doors. I greeted him, helped him set up and went back to my normal duties. I didn't have to help the coach since the gym had everything he needed for sports. I just had to lock the doors once they were done, and refinish the gym floor for all the shoe marks and, well, any trash on the ground. As for the Cub Scouts meeting, it was the same concept. Just had to vacuum around the used area and disinfect any surfaces used, along with throwing any trash left behind away. During my normal shift duties, I couldn't help but feel as if I was being watched. I kept telling myself that it could have been a student or parent watching me from a distance, but I was in a more secluded area of the building, away from the after-school activities. No, this was different. It felt like someone was nearby. You know how you can hear someone coming from around a corner without hearing their footsteps or physically seeing them? It was just like that, only all around me. Once the after-school activities had come to an end, around eight, I made sure every person was out of the building and locked the doors. The front doors had windows on them, and it was pitch black outside. Once I finished engaging the last lock, I couldn't help but notice a tall and dark-clothed man behind me in the reflection. I quickly turned around, only to see that no one was there. What the hell? thought to myself. I sighed and continued on with my duties. I started with the gym floor and began buffing the floors. This was the job that took the most time, so I wanted to get this done first. As I finished, I turned the machine off, and in the distance, I could hear muffled screams. It was coming from the building. Okay, something isn't right here, I exclaimed. I got all of the equipment into the receiving room and left the floor to dry, and I could still hear the faint sounds of screaming. It was coming from my section, and I still had rooms to do. I decided to put some headphones in and listen to music, so I could ignore this strange occurrence. I decided to put on classical music, as it helped calm my nerves. I started with Moonlight Sonata, a piece from Beethoven, and just let my playlist shuffle. When I clean the rooms, I normally just focus on what's right in front of me. But tonight, I couldn't help but look around me as if I were to see the man in a corner somewhere. I tried my best just to ignore it, but when I got to a part of the room located by a window, 
I felt compelled to look outside. All I could see was just total darkness. Pitch black. Not a street light. No dim and distant lights from a home. Just darkness. And then the power went out. I was absolutely terrified. What I saw outside will haunt me for the rest of my life. It was the most sinister, elongated face I've ever seen in my entire life. His eyes sunken in, but wide and focused. Wrinkled skin with a white complexion and the most menacing smile I could ever imagine, complete with what seemed to be over a hundred teeth that looked like needles. I wasted no time, and I ran out of that building without even clocking out or looking back. I ran outside to my vehicle without looking over my shoulder to see if that thing was following me. And when I started my car, I drove out of the parking lot. To the left of me, in the playground, I could see him watching me. He was waving. The next day, my supervisor was furious that I just left without clocking out or calling security to lock the doors. I explained what happened, and, well... He fired me. One day, on my own accord, I went back to that school and wanted to warn the principal about what had happened to me. I met with her and I told her to hire an exorcist or get someone to cleanse that school spiritually because, well, there is something evil in that school. She replied, Tim, I don't understand. What happened? I told her everything. How this tall man had scared the living shit out of me. How I'd heard screams, everything. Her mood changed. She seemed uneasy. She let out a big, long breath and began to say, There's something I want to show you. She went to a filing cabinet and opened it. Sifting through files, she finally pulled out a book. It was a yearbook from 1986. What's that for? I asked. She then flipped through some pages and finally stopped on a page that had pictures with descriptions under them. She pointed one out and said, Here, take a look. What I saw was a tall man mopping a floor with a smile I will never forget. It was the man I'd seen that night. It had to be. Oh... My God, I said while shivering. He was the janitor here from 1984 to 1986. I was told he would go into the bathroom and spy on the kids, smiling at them. My heart sank. And I let out a whimpering cough, trying to clear my throat, which was now gasping for air. Well, what happened to him? I asked. She closed the book looked at me and said, Aside from the spying, he got fired for constantly scaring the children even after Halloween was over. He would make them scream in terror. Those were the screams I'd heard. After he got fired, he would stalk the students. They would go missing. At first, no one thought anything of it, but a detective brought him in for questioning. He was then arrested and admitted he had kidnapped, raped, and killed 15 students. The detective claimed that he was smiling when he confessed. He was given the death penalty by lethal injection, and it's said he was even smiling as he died. So, I have a situation. Well, more of an unusual paranormal phenomena than a situation, which has me puzzled. I'm trying to find out why it's happening to me and what I can do. So please, if it seems like I veer off course, let me know and I'll get back on track. I'll start it from the first encounter that happened that day. Then I'll go on every day I actually had encounters instead of day by day. I'll start with a dream that I constantly had since, well, since I could remember. I'm driving in the middle of the night. I'm in a hurry to get somewhere. 
I don't know why. All I know is I have to get there. And then, boom. The car in the opposite lane has swerved into my lane, accidentally clipping me into losing control of my vehicle and crashing into a tree. Me not having my seatbelt on means I go flying out of the car and barely missing the tree, but landing on the hard surface of the asphalt. Legs are broken, ribs broken, and impaled into my lungs as I lay there. I'm still alive, but not for long. I see a figure approach me, and I muster whatever energy I can to call for help, and everything goes dark. Then I awaken in my room, looking up at my ceiling again, hearing my dad calling for me to go downstairs while my phone alarm was going off. I muster up the energy and shake off the pain that comes with that dream, shut my phone off and get up. I go downstairs to see my father already having breakfast on the table in his work attire, ready to go. Morning, my father said. Uh, morning, I replied, while rubbing the sore spots on my body. You know, if you keep sleeping in like this, I'm going to have to attach an alarm clock to your head. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know what it is. It seems like I just can't get enough sleep. Ah, oh, you're just growing. Just got to always plan around these things, though. Like, I don't know, go to sleep earlier or set multiple alarms on your phone or something. He was right, as always, giving me hindsight on how I should handle things. Though I didn't mind it much because, at the end of the day, they did help, even though some were kind of obvious. We finished breakfast and we did the usual goodbye hug before we went our separate way. As I'm making my way to school on foot... I see the same three things, basically, landmarks of a sort. I see Benito's Tire Shop, Tom's Burgers, and that older gentleman standing by the tree off T Street. He never replies, just gives the glare as I walk past him. His shoes are scuffed, full of holes and covered in mud. He doesn't seem to cause any trouble, so I don't really feel threatened by him. I mean, he's been by that tree for years, ever since I began walking this way. Also, I have about 30 pounds on him, so if he does try something, I doubt it would end well for him. I get to school to meet up with my friends, Todd, Sam, who's a girl by the way, and Luke. All three have been friends since elementary school, and although we're all the same age, I do look three years older than them. I usually have a foot in height over them. Also, I've got facial hair on top of it. They tease me by saying I was held back four years, or that I'm a Sasquatch's son. Both are possible, especially the fact that I don't look a lot like my dad. So we all make our way into school. I guess I should explain a bit. Well, it's a normal high school, like seen on TV. There are the cliques, such as the jocks, the mean girls, the stoners, the emo, goth, oh, and the nerds. But the difference was, nobody ever had any beef with the other. Sure, there were a couple of bullies here and there, but overall, everyone was pretty decent to each other. Being a freshman, it was still a lot to take in. That and the ridiculous amount of homework you have to do. But things weren't so bad for me. I was actually accepted to the varsity football team as a middle linebacker. I'm sure it had to do with the fact in my first year I was already out lifting the team, and even some of the coaches. Well, not to toot my own horn or anything, but... I was already up to four plates on my bench press, and for those who have no idea what that is, it's a little over 400 pounds. I never liked the sport, but it was a good way to take out my anger on people, while possibly having a chance to get to go to a good college for free. Anyways, not the point, so sorry for going off course. The reason I bring that up is that there is a varsity cheerleader that cheers for our games, who, for some reason, I cannot stop looking at but not in that perv way that would make me into a stalker. Like, well, just wanting to get to know her. Seems so interesting, I don't know. So, every game we're at together, I turn and do my awkward wave, and she smiles and waves back. Then I go and crush someone's soul on the field while everyone cheers. But this time, she approached me. Hi, Abel, right? She asked. Um, yeah... 
Although my friends call me Abe, <laughs> like Lincoln, you know, because I'm so tall. And Abe Lincoln was tall enough. Right, I get it. She laughed. I'm Anne. I was thinking maybe sometime we should hang out. Like, go watch a movie or something? Looking down, rubbing my head. Still kind of nervous, because she's three years above me after all. Now, don't blame a kid for being nervous, so... I looked back up, ready to say yes. When I saw the man from the tree behind her. I pause in shock looking around at the expressions of everyone else to see if they see what I'm seeing, but none of them seem to notice him. I look forward again, and before I can even react, he spoke. Um, yeah, that sounds good. We should do a group thing with all of us. It'll be a blast. I repeated what he said to her word for word. She loved that idea, and so did my friends. Well... Because we're freshmen, and they all agreed, and started making plans and talking to each other. The chatter started to become more silent to me, because, because I couldn't get over the fact that I'm seeing this person who, I'm convinced, is a ghost man. He used me like a puppet. But as soon as I said those words, he was gone, and I was staring at Anne's smiling face, and it kind of washed the fear I had away from me. Later that week, we all went to the movies. And just like that, we were always together. Never as a couple, though. I thought about the idea once, and the thought made me want to vomit. We had a sleepover once as well, with all my friends and hers. Luckily, one of her friends, Kate, I think, her parents were out of town for the weekend, so we had a little more fun with drinks, which almost got one of my friends laid. Until he puked in on her, of course. <laughs> Classic Luke. But it led to me being alone with Anne, while the others tended to Luke and his fountain of vomit that wouldn't seem to end. We sat outside to avoid the smell. I think the alcohol was starting to remove the illness I felt when I thought of Anne as more than a friend. She looked up into the stars above us, with a smile that was so cute. Um, your dad's okay with you staying over here? I wouldn't know. He died before I was born. My mom wouldn't be happy. She knew you were here also. You know, thinking every teenager is wanting to have sex and so on. God, it killed me to ask her to help me get birth control. The look on her face, though, as if I asked her to help me bury a body. She started to laugh, as did I. Sorry to hear you about your dad. It must be tough, I told her. It's okay. I didn't really know the guy. All I have is pictures to go off of. But I heard he was a good man and was happy to hear that my mom was pregnant with me. She replied, smiling and looking up to the stars. Oh, anybody would be lucky to have you in their life. He must have known how you were going to turn out. I mean, Miss UCLA University we're talking about. I answered. She smiled, but didn't say any more. I had this urge, and I couldn't help myself. I hugged her from the side and leaned in for a kiss on her cheek. Shocked, she turns to me with a look of confusion. I'm sorry, I couldn't help it. You just look so adorable with it. I stop in my track, as that same man appeared again. But this time, he wasn't talking. He pounced on me, holding my throat in a rage. I couldn't shake him off. It was like I had an elephant on my chest. All Anne did was go to my side, looking at me while I struggled with this man. God, how could she not see him? I thought to myself, as I continued to struggle for my life against this psycho. He finally spoke again. Not her. Anyone but her. I nodded in response, and just like that he vanished without a trace. I gasped for air, as Anne helped me up, seeing that there was something wrong with me. Remembering what he said, I broke from her grasp. What the hell did I do? She yelled. Nothing. I'm sorry. Just don't want to be touched, is all. I answered. I think the drink's got to me. I need to go home. I got up, 
and before she could say anything, I walked off. I don't know what to do. I approach the man whenever he's by the tree, but he doesn't respond. He just stares. Anne's now freaking out by the fact that I'm freaking out, and we're starting to grow more separate. Which, in my heart, something I don't want. I want to be there for her. Please, someone. Give me an idea of what's going on. So, a couple more from Dr. Creepin's vault there, the subreddit I set up so that you could send your stories to me and I could read them all for you. Hope you enjoyed those two. Thematically, both kind of similar, and um, you'll notice I've been doing a lot of more of these sort of doubling up of shorter stories, and that's because I was focusing on longer ones, but there's so many good shorter stories out there, I just have to read some of them for you. But I have got a lot of longer stories lined up. Just need to catch up with a bit of work on the old day job, <laughs> and I'll be with you some, with some longer stories, okay? So they're coming up soon. Well, back again on Friday. I hope you're going to join me again. Of course you are. Yes, I know you will. Until then, sweet dreams and bye-bye. Thank you so much for choosing to spend your time listening to me. Now, if you enjoyed the Dr. Creepin experience, then come find me on Facebook, come chat with me on Twitter, listen to the background music and download it if you like on SoundCloud, drop by the store, pick up a t-shirt, and, importantly, if you've got a story you'd like me to read, send it to Dr. Creepin's vault, the subreddit I set up so that I could read your stories. Now, looking forward to seeing you all again real soon, so... Come check me out, okay?